Hello everyone, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Ferrari F60 from the uh, 2009 Formula 1 World Championship. And in the car is Kimi Raikkonen. Now the 2009 Ferrari, the F60, is sort of renowned as being a pile of shit. Um, Basically, Ferrari had pushed the development of their 2008 car uh, right to the edge as they were fighting for the championship still, uh, basically neglecting the development uh, or the starting development of the 2009 car, which sort of caught them out really with the new rules that were being brought in, uh, basically reducing the car bodywork to a well, bare minimum of winglets, uh, increasing the width of the front wing, the narrowing of the rear wing, and also the return to slick tyres. Also, the introduction of curves that year. Um, which also caught them out a bit, so 2009 did not start well for the Ferrari team. Uh, the car overall though does not look too bad, or did not look too bad, uh, compared to this model anyway. Um, but yeah, the 2009 Ferrari were the first team to re release, uh, or to launch their 2009 spec car. Uh, BMW had already sort of done a prototype uh, mock-up of their 2009 car using the 08 car, uh, which a lot of fans did not like, so uh, it was interesting to see how 2009 with pan out for the rest of the teams, but Ferrari released their car and it did not look too bad in my opinion. Uh, definitely different to what we had seen previously, but uh, overall I didn't think the uh, 09 car looked too bad. That's just aesthetics, but performance wise, oh dear. Uh, the team went three races, the first three races of the season without scoring a single point. Reliability was dire. The car wasn't slow, it's just sort of difficult to drive and well, like I said, the reliability was poor, uh, and also I think the frustrations were starting to show pretty early on with Kimi Raikkonen as he sort of parked cars and just basically walked away as uh, yeah, his uh, in interest in Formula 1 had sort of waned. Uh, the results did not really start to come in until around, I think it was round 4 when they pick up their first points. For, was it 4th place? Or was it 6th place? I can't remember. They didn't pick up many points uh, to begin with, but uh, they got their first podium at Monaco, um, and eventually managed to win their first, or well, the only race of 2009 at the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, basically, Ferrari, or Kimi Raikkonen, just used the curves. The, the curves were the only thing that kept them in front. I mean, it's a very fast charging Force India, driven by Giancarlo Fisichetta at the Belgian Grand Prix, and he was on his, hot on his heels throughout the entire race. It's basically the curves that saved Raikkonen from uh, losing out. Uh, but uh, the, tr the season did not go too well for Felipe Massa. He's uh, suffered a massive head in well, a massive head injury at the uh, Hungarian Grand Prix after being hit by a piece of debris, and uh, was sidelined for the rest of the season. Uh, the following drivers who took over his position in the team uh, did not fare too well. It was fair to say they could not make use of a very difficult car to drive and set up. Luca Badoa had two attempts in the car and failed miserably. Giancarlo Fisichella then took his place uh, after two races and still could not get much out of the car. It was slightly better off than Luca Badoa but yeah, the Ferrari was too difficult and too cumbersome to set up uh, compared to what they've been used to. So yeah, it wasn't a good time for them. And uh, I think the issue started off, like I said at the beginning, Ferrari had uh, sidelined their development of this car at the beginning of the season, or, or during 2008, to focus on their championship campaign. Uh, they won the Constructors in 2008, but uh, they lost the Drivers' Championship at the last round. Uh, but so uh, that sort of neglected their 2009 car prospects. Uh, they were caught out in the diffuser round, really, because Braun, Williams and Toyota had brought out the double-deck diffuser, and then other teams followed that concept, but Ferrari sort of shot themselves in the foot. They had designed their car with a very large or very low gearbox on the on the back of the car, which sort of wasn't wasn't really uh, suited. Well, they couldn't really put a double deck diffuser on the car, so uh, other teams managed to adapt their car to fit the diffu the new diffuser type, but Ferrari could not due to their gearbox. So Ferrari sort of had to make do of what they had. So yeah, 2009, sort of a washout year. But uh, nonetheless, it still wasn't a bad looking car, and I keep going on about the aesthetics. It's completely different to this model. So, um, yeah, let's get on to the model. So, it's a Hot Wheels model, as you can see. Uh, not a particularly pretty looking model. Compared to the 08 car, which had a nice metallic red, this is sort of the basic of red. And it's in a red Mattel box, as you can tell, red Ferrari bo uh, box. And. Uh, yeah, that's about it really for the uh, the box, it's just red really. But you can see the car in there and it is very bare, even just by looking at it in the box, but yeah, it's it's not a pretty... Well, it doesn't look too bad, but I'd say it's not pretty when you get it out of the box, so what I'll do, I shall put the camera down. 
Oh, excuse all the fart noises, that's the bloody springs under my legs keep going. I'm not sat on a spring, I'm just sat on a mattress. So just try and get it out the box somehow. There we go. Open that side, open that. And typical Mattel, they tend to pack their boxes out with loads of cardboard and bits and old shit and knock the camera over. Right. God, it's like giving birth, is it? Alright, there we go. Alright, that's the, that's the car out of the box. And as you can see, it sits on a, on a nice little plinth. Enough about that. So let's go quick looking at the car. So the car is, like I say, very bare. There's not any rivet details on this thing. And yeah, for a car that is as rare as it is, it's you know not a pretty model. So I think uh, Mattel sort of shot themselves in the foot with this one. Um, I think the enthusiasm for their Formula 1 campaign has sort of diminished a bit. And I think it shows really with their tyres. This is something that they kept up with all of their base uh, basic models throughout the uh, slick tyre era. Very smooth slicks with a mould line through the middle, so they've not done a lot of detailing there. And I also hate these uh, wheel rims as well, I'm glad they banned those things. But yeah, it's not a pretty model. I mean, it's not a bad model, but I think for the price that people paid for it, it's not what you'd expect. I mean, the front wing, basic detail, as you expect. I mean, the front wings were pretty basic in 09, but I mean... There's no rivets, no rivets. There's no screws. There's no, you know, grey trim or anything like that. It's just very basic. Uh, but yeah, you've got the detailing along there. You've got a little little barge board there, and so there's no, there's this uh, gap lines in the bodywork, but that's it. There's no uh, screws or rivet marks. Even the painted black on the rear here. I mean, this is where the exhaust pipes would go. I mean, look at that. That is just painted black, very randomly. Really, there's no real detail to that. But I'll come back to that in a minute. So what we're going to do, I'm going to work out how many screws are on this thing. And get it off the base and what we've got. We've got uh, four screws, so I should do a quick jump cut while I sort that out. So back in a moment. Okay, back again. Now I've got the car out the box and I've brought the light down as well. So I've got that. I'm holding the light in my hand, so it's uh, a bit wavy. Uh, so yeah, running out of battery on that one. But uh, overall the car is, well it's out the box now, but overall the car is as basic as you can get. And the light... Uh, sort of does the paint like a bit more justice really. I mean there's a nice nice red tinge to it. It doesn't show on camera but in person it does look quite good under light. But under basic light it looks more pink. But uh, okay, there we go. But what I was referring to on the rear here, you haven't got exhaust pipes, you've just got holes in the back of the car. Look, a big hole goes into the bodywork and that's it. It's painted and it's got a cobweb on it as well. That's weird. But yeah, it's uh, painted just black, very matte painted. And there's no exhaust pipe in there, it's just a hole. That's it, that's all the detailing they've done there. Absolute travesty, that is. You know, considering the price, it is not a nice deal, that. So, anyway, there's the rear bodywork, you've got the rear going up there, and there's dust on it again. I don't know if these boxes leak. Anyway, that's the uh, the rear there, you've got the rear uh, rear wing, and also quite sturdy on there. Got the rear diffuser, the very basic rear diffuser that you had. You can see the tyres. Uh, they're a bit scuffed, I think they're this sort of natural wear on them, I think they're starting to deteriorate a bit, but uh, overall it's not as, they look not as bad as they did on the first day. I think this is sort of natural decay really, rather than the scrub tyres, but they were shiny when we got when I got them, so there we go. And also, you've got the uh, join line in the middle. Quick look over the top of the bodywork, you've got the uh, very bulbous shaped Ferrari, it's a very weird shaped car this is, because you've got the detailing over the top, you've got the cockpit steering wheel there, not badly detailed there, and you've also got the basic driver as well, so the, the helmet design is a bit weird. Got the front tyres there, the very wide front wing. Steering does work as you can see, the car is turning to the uh, to the right. The wing mirrors are a basic sticker on the pod really, so nothing really to shout about there. And like I said, it's not a bad model, it's just not what you'd expect for the price that you would pay. I mean it is quite a rare model as well now, so pick this up, this this thing up cheap is ridiculous, you know, you can <laughs> basically can't find it. But if we look at the front of the car anyway, you've got the uh, odd shaped nose, I'm trying to keep the light on it as well, so you've got the uh, full on front wing there, the front wing is as wide as the car, and for the front it doesn't look too bad, it sort of doesn't show the, uh, like a detail on it, but yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't look too bad, and it, they haven't got any of the, um, the Marlboro detailing, I mean, they haven't got no barcodes on it, so you can see on the rear body what there, no barcode or anything, so the car is relatively basic. But I have bought some decals for this car and I will apply them and I will do 
probably a screenshot of when that's done but I haven't got them yet so uh, the car is a blank canvas for anyone who wants to update their car I have bought barcode decals so they'll go on the uh, side part of the rear wing and the front of the bodywork as well and that should be interesting just to make the car look something better than what it is still won't account for the lack of uh, exhaust pipes there uh, yeah you've got the uh, rear wheels spinners there god I hated these things at the time you've got the rear wheel, know, rear wheel spinner there attached to the rear wheel very basic there it's got a sort of decal on it but it's just sort of flat plastic really it's got a little ridge there but yeah it's still fairly basic the front wheel spinner though it's got the uh, little little um, flume on the front so sort of like a brake duct and also it doesn't turn either so yes well, it didn't turn on the real car there, but that's, that's just me. I really don't like these things. I'm just glad they banned them. But, uh, yeah. But overall, I would... I say I can't really recommend this car, but then again, if you're a Ferrari collector, you'll probably go out and buy it, but try and get it as cheap as possible. I know it is quite a rare car now, but uh, yeah, if you can get it cheap, then you're doing all right. Um, I'm not sure what it goes for retail, because, like I said, they're quite rare. A quick look underneath, not much to say there. Got the rear rear bodywork there. Made in China, as you'd expect. It's, it's textured uh, bodywork as well, so it's got the uh, carbon texture on, on the bottom it has anyway, not on the top. Uh, but it's not too bad. But I just would not recommend this for the price. It is ridiculous how expensive this car is and how basic it is. I mean, the 2010 car, when that came out, that was a completely different model, you know, completely different in terms of detail. Um, and yeah, I would recommend getting the 2010 car. Even the 2008 car is a better car than this. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a shame what they uh, did with this one. But at least in 2009, there was a lot more cars available. I mean, in 2008, to begin with, there were just four models being produced in 118. That was McLaren, Ferrari, Renault, and BMW. And then later on, the Toro Rosso was announced. And that came out another year later on. In 2009, we had, of course, Ferrari, BMW, McLaren, and Renault. And Toro Rosso. And then we had Red Bull and Braun being produced, which is sort of an, an up on that. And then in 2010, it sort of continued along. And... Uh, yeah, we sort of got back into the realms of uh, proper die cast, but then again, the price started going up, so, you know, there you go. But, uh, yeah, not uh, not too bad in the long run, really. I mean, this car, like I say, it's a, it's a, um, a blank canvas for anyone who wants to update the car, like I'm going to do well, later on with the decals, but we'll wait and see on that one. So that is the Ferrari F60, and like I say, not much I can say about it, it's... It is what it is, and that's what it is, so there we go. But anyway, that's that. So this is Rich signing off, logging off, disappearing, and I'll try and return in another video, so bye for now.